So I've learned some. So I learned some things. Now, how do I actually make a referral? How do I actually call, you know, call and actually make sure that this happens? Maybe you practice that. Maybe you just call and ask the question of the agencies. Um, you practice with another teacher. You practice with a friend. Um, and so just because, again, it's, a, it's one thing to know something, but it's a skill to actually be able to do that. And it releases a lot of that anxiety as well. Even if you never have to make the referral, you have that as a skill set and something that you'd be comfortable to kind of lean into. And then active self-care. So I work at an agency where we don't do direct service very often. So we help the people that are helping directly with victims and survivors of a very of various crimes. Um, but my team still does self-care as a team every single week um, because we have to be present to those that we're helping to support. And so we can't do self-care when we're just stressed out because our proverbial vase is already full, right? We don't have any more space. But if we're doing this actively and we're taking that time, then one, if we do it and it doesn't work, we know that something else is activated in our body. Something else is bigger and we're gonna have to do something different. But it also allows you to just continue to know, um, it's kind of like that sense of when someone's gonna get a cold. When you're eating well and you know really taking good care of yourself, you can kind of sense something's going to happen, and then you can you know take more vitamins, you know really think about what you're eating, um, you know, and be able to kind of help you know not get as sick, and so it just activates the things that we have control over in a different way, and self care does not mean you know 30 minutes of meditation every day. That's fantastic if you can. I'm a very busy mom of two young boys that never stop. Um, and so I have to find five minute breaks. Um, I have to think about what I can do if I can take this meeting, um, walking on the phone and walking outside so I can just be present in nature. Um, I need to think about what I can do in my car while I'm driving in between appointments um, so I can be cognizant of my breath. I can maybe have some good music on. And it's all very intentional because I have to give myself time and space, not just at the end of the day when I'm exhausted, um, but you know when I have some intention of doing that all day long. And also how can you create a regulating environment? Um, I love doing some of this work in classrooms or in therapy offices um, because there's so many fun things that you can do. Um, so we would have activity dough that has different natural scents in there. Um, kids like to fidget. We would purposely give things on desks and in groups where people could play with Play-Doh or they could, you know, um, play with all of the, you know, like the the slimy stuff, and it depends on what's in your classroom, but we would encourage that because it helps to acclimate and to get onto the other side of your brain. Um, you know, finding things to rock on, um, instead of telling kids to stop rocking, purposely putting them on the bouncy ball and say, go ahead and keep talking to me and bounce. Um, we would have a mini trampoline where we could go over and bounce. Um, you know, we would have um, sometimes during the day changing the lighting, um, bringing in some little lighting things that would have like different colors come in the room for different sessions or for different breaks. Um, anytime you can activate a different sense, it creates a regulating environment. Um, and a lot of that can just be fun in the way that you design and you guys can email me and I can connect you with some folks that have been very thoughtful and creative with what their rooms look like. So kids can naturally regulate by just being in a room. Also, your attitude is what you have control over, even on the tough days. Um, but even to say, I have the ability to be okay. Um, we can make a change as a community and I can do my part um, as, as far as that change goes. So one thing that I love about the brain is that when we have something that's, you know, if we're activated or if the kids we're working with are activated, um, we, you know, so they're emotive and they're reacting. We want them to get to the logical part of the brain saying, sit down, stop, don't do that, calm down. Normally aren't things that are going to deactivate any of that. Um, but what we can do is make bridges. And so 
even stopping, you're escalated, the other person's escalated, and say, okay, so what we're gonna do, this is journal, just use words. I want you guys to write about the color blue for five minutes and just write, write about the color blue for 90 seconds. Um, and that writing gets us back into the logical part of our brain. And then we can say, hey, what just happened? What was that? You know, again, I love Play-Doh because it has that tactile. And the more that you're intentionally using a different sense and our sense of touch is something different, um, then that's going to, again, put us back into the logical part of our brain. Keep talking to me as you're playing with your Play-Doh. Even with teenagers, you can get them with different scents and then it doesn't seem as juvenile and seems kind of cool. Um, but then that gets us into a different sense of our brain. Um, you know, being able to just draw circles, you know, anything in the figure eight. Um, I've worked with some classrooms that have hula hoops and every once in a while when they can kind of just sense things happening, it's hula time. Um, they have hula, hula music and they all get a hula hoop and for two minutes they hula. And that was better than all of the things that happen when we allow things to cascade. Or even talking, you know, with my kids, um, you know, we practice some of those things in our house. So does it, you know, it takes two minutes to stop and do something different. So then I can talk to them and not be frustrated about 20 minute conversation about socks being right next to the hamper, right? Um, so making bridges um, and so anything that can talk about the art side of our brain will get us back to the logical side of our brain um, and um, or even things that you know are going to be um, stressful inducing, um, you know, you know, listening to some calm music or getting up and dancing and shaking um, before a test, um, you know, so any of those type of things can be really helpful. Um, and it just shifts the atmosphere in your room or in your home. Um, we do lots of fun things in the car like that, um, especially when my boys like to kind of bicker when they get in. So we do fun things to kind of help avoid that. And again, if you guys have questions, let me know, um, or, you know, you can answer, ask in the chat as well. But relationships is kind of that second ripple. And so what I have control over is thinking about what is my peer influence? And not just as a teacher that I'm leaning in with other students, but as a peer to peer to the teachers, as a parent in my community, um, as a sister, however you identify as a you know, father, a dad, however you identify who's in your peer circle, that's who you have influence over. I can influence that we're supporting each other, that we are going to lean in and ask the question of like, how can I help you? Um, we're going to be honest to say, these are the things that I need you to help me with. Um, we're going to be able to thank those that we know are doing work on our behalf, even though sometimes it's an uphill battle. Um, we have control over those things. And again, we have control over, um, you know, maybe we don't have, you know, especially like the teachers, you have tests and you have scoring, um, you know, you have assessments, you have curriculum you have to get through. But what if there was a way to do some of your assignments to think about the power of resiliency? We have that through history. We have um, creative ways to talk about balance through math, you know, whether it's through geometry or just the, the, the beauty and equations. Um, obviously, English, we can go into lots of different spaces um, as far as this kind of what does resiliency look like? Um, who are powerful people that we should be thinking about that have overcome something? Um, what are some key areas that we can talk about as a class about how, you know, resiliency has looked for different historical figures or in its different historical movements? Science, you know, sports, they all have ways that we can intentionally have conversation about doing something that's tough, that's complicated, um, that has interesting results that, again, we have control over. So there's different ways to kind of talk and think about those um, things. This kind of gets our mind, again, not just as the individual, but as what am I doing in my relationships? And then how are we communicating with each other? Um, when we start thinking about something that's happened, but often I hear is, oh, I used to love when we would go into class early and, you know, me and some of the other teachers would have coffee or we'd even meet for happy hour on Fridays and we just don't do that anymore. So think about like some of the things that you've lost, you know, do you want to bring back Friday night 
eating together and having dinner? Do you want to have potlucks again during lunch and having conversations about why we're not doing that? Um, and again, COVID has, you know, brought lots of different conversations into our lives, but how can we think about, you know, getting back to the things that we may have lost? Um, how do we communicate with each other? Can we talk about things feeling safe? Can we talk about things being rough? Can we talk about, this has been hard and I want October to not feel so hard. So in my class, how can we make this not feel so hard? How can we give some words, give some intention um, so we can you know, regain some of the things that we do have control over? How are we talking to your parents? How are we talking again to our community members? Um, I know some people that have experienced some trauma that, you know, it would be so hard to do anything with them because it would take hours just to go into the store because they wanted to talk to every single person. And they had a conversation with the person that was folding the towels and the person that was over here and um, buying anything with them was always an adventure. And they experienced some trauma and they didn't want to make those connections anymore. They go into the store and come right out. And that was a signal for me as part of their social support to be like, what's going on? Because that's not like you. No, I'm fine. Well, we've already had conversations that fine is an, an okay way to talk to each other. So tell me what it is. I'm okay to hold it. I can't fix it, but just give it to me. Let's see if I can hold it for you for a little bit. And again, that's how we're going to rebuild our personal relationships and allow people to know that, you know, what's happened, we all have different ways to feel things. And I love the way it was shared at the beginning that we sense things and feel things and name things in different ways. And healing, you know, isn't just one way or no way. Um, and the, the more we talk about it, the more we encourage our kids to talk about it, the more we encourage our students to talk about it. Um, and then it just changes the dynamics and it's a very easy thing that we have control over. And again, consistency is huge. And so what am I doing to build resiliency or safety for myself? And when I'm coming into the classroom, you know, where am I giving myself space to regulate? Where am I giving myself space to allow the kids to regulate? Because sometimes kids are resilient and they're doing just fine and we're not. And so how do we help that, right? Um, how do we start to move through things when kids have started to move past them? How do we allow ourselves that, that, you know, that space of being okay with being in different spaces? Or maybe um, I've worked with people that had survivor guilt. They weren't there when an incident occurred. And because they weren't there, that's what really stressed them out. And so giving permission to be like, so, how, how are we going to be okay with this? Because you can choose to hold on to it. You can choose to put it in your back pocket and carry it with you. Um, as a survivor of different things myself, I had to come to that kind of reality. I have enough in my life for anyone to have heard the story to be like, wow, that's a lot. I get why you're A, B, C, D, E, F, right? But then I had a choice of like, is this the way I want my story to continue? I didn't have control over the things that happened, but me just saying, ah, oh, it's just so much. I just can't, you know, it didn't give me permission to honor the things that I've lost because I got stuck in what that was. And the more that I gave myself permission to lean in and to, to really think through that and feel through that, I was able to realize it's not the same life but it's a different life that I have control over and that's really okay. So how am I building in that consistency? How am I really focusing on myself? How am I focusing on my students, other teachers? How am I allowing my personal relationships to say, hey, you're in your head or hey, you're not acting right. How can we talk about this? How can we normalize what's happening? And it doesn't have to be all the time, right? But when we have that good aha, then it just, you know, it, it, you know, fills up our proverbial cup and we're like, oh, okay, we can do this. And sometimes in my life, all I've needed to know is not that I need to know you're struggling, but it's needed to know that you also struggle 
And then I can go, oh, okay, it's not just me. Because, you know, I have all these masks and all these things I have to do to make sure that I, you know, appear, you know, always in control. And I, I wasn't in control and I didn't know what to do because I didn't have a mask for not being in control. So it's okay for us to navigate these new things. Uh, working with teachers that have been involved in the similar issues as your community has. Sometimes it's like, I didn't know. And now I feel like I'm not doing well because I didn't know what to do. And you can lean in to know what to do. But you can also lean into just forgiving yourself for not knowing that. So I love mirror neurons. They're this beautiful thing in our brain. So this is the stuff that happens that if I go, oh, guys, it's, uh, it's kind of a long day. If I yawn or want to stretch, some of you may have yawned and wanted to stretch as well. Um, this is also the, the thing when someone's really singing and you're like, yes, yes, I feel that too. Or I love it with babies when you do the baby faces and they do the right same baby faces and then you're sitting there googling and, and, and babbling for an hour and you're like, this is amazing. So, the, you know, so our mirrors want to, you know, our brains want to react with each other. And so if they see someone excited, then I want to be excited um, of, you know, just looking at some of the stuff that happened in the Olympics over the summer. Um, you know, I'm not a swimmer, but I loved swimming. And anytime someone was racing, I had no dynamics of what was happening. But I was like, yes, we won. We won. We did it. I had nothing to do with the win. Um, I was a very active participant from my couch, um, but it felt good. So those are those mere neuron things. Um, you know, you guys have a, you know, good football and when they win, we all win, right? And we feel that and we get excited about it. Um, and so those are the things to tap into. So even the times when you're feeling stressed, when you know this is going to be a hard week, where can I tap into the energy that I want? I have girlfriends that when I need to just take a break and just be goofy, I can just call them and say, man, tell me something funny. Like, help me just, you know, connect to that. Um, you know, I, I have some, you know, favorite sports clips of just things that I'm like, oh, yes, I love that. And it just gets me into a great mood. Um, or, you know, just, you know, I have girlfriends and um, now, you know, little nieces and nephews of like, let's just go play or I go play with my boys. Um, and I just need to take that break, but it's an intentional break that I have control over because I want to mirror different behavior that I know I'm experiencing. So going into our next ripple, again, if you guys have questions, please let me know. But when we're looking at our community ripple. So we've talked about myself. I have to know what stresses me out. I have to know what I have control over. Even if it doesn't feel like I have control over a lot of things, I have a little bit of control over these things. Okay, I need to communicate with my relationships. I need to talk to my people. Um, we need to have a sense of what I need from them and what they need from me. Now, what do we do with our community, with that next ripple? So one piece about your community is that your community needs you. Yeah, you guys have some amazing advocates that, you know, help put together this symposium that are very active in your community. Um, leadership, you know, wants to do things. Um, sometimes you, they don't want to do things or not doing things in the way that you want them to. Um, but your community needs you, even if it doesn't feel like that. Even if it feels like you're not going to add something. A community needs all of the pieces. Um, and so what you have control over is how can I add my voice to the community voice? Can I volunteer in a place? Do I know some place that may need some assistance? Can I just go to meetings and just hear what people are saying? So if someone asks me, or if I get into a dialogue with someone, um, I'm informed by what was said and not just listening to what people told me was said, but I'm informed, I'm showing up. Um, you can add your voice in that way. I can attend community events. Um, again, not all the, the events that sound, you know, bureaucratic or therapeutic, but just being connected to my community. I can attend trainings like this one. Um, I can start asking what other trainings can I take? What are other things that I can do um, to be more thoughtful and be able to assist and hold the space for my community? Um, you know, we've had people that have learned a lot about, you know, suicidal ideation, 
um, those things and self-harm come up, especially after an incident that doesn't make sense to us, that we have a hard time making logical. Um, and so getting more informed in that can help you not only for yourself, but for your friends and for, again, your community. Um, and again, how can I communicate with leadership? Even if I know leadership isn't going to listen. And that happens in a community, right? But what can I do to help support the leaders that should be doing more or the leaders that can maybe just, you know, continue to support us in a different way? And how can I, can you, you know, you know, help support um, the community members that are doing good work, but maybe aren't in leadership positions? Maybe I can take them lunch. Um, you know, maybe I can drop some stuff off for some first responders. Uh, maybe I can think about ways to do, um, you know, breakfast for the teachers because showing up in a space that feels like there's no safety is super, super hard. Having to regulate kids um, in a space where there's not words to talk about things is super hard. So how can I help that? Um, how can I do, you know, teacher birthday supports every month? Um, and again, you can help the larger community talk about how do we redefine what is possible? Um, like different people today talked about after an event, you have, you know, memorial things that come up and, you know, a, a space for people to grieve, to leave cards, to leave notes and teddy bears and um, flowers. But how do we keep, keep doing that? How do we say as a community, this happened and this is hard, but we're just going to keep leaning in? Um, and we're going to be stronger. You know, Boston Strong was a was a great example of that after the um, Boston Marathon bombing of we're Boston Strong. Like, we got this. What else can we do? Because we will not be defined by an incident of terror. Um, you know, so how can we pull on who you know in the community to help really define what is possible? And these are larger pieces you know, when we're looking at communities, when we get into a space where we say, why did these things happen? Sometimes we have to look at what vulnerabilities existed, what inequities existed. And, and often it's just because we don't talk about things. So how do we create space within myself, within my circle, within my peer support, within my community, where we can just say the things that need to be said? Doesn't mean we have to fix them. Doesn't mean we have the answers. Sometimes we just have to say the things that need to be said. And again, you know, when we're talking about community healing, what is possible in the next nine months versus just what is our desire? And to be okay with those being really different. You know, how do we support, um, you know, acknowledging expectations? How do we hold the folks accountable? How am I going to let it go when someone has not been held accountable and I'm giving it too much energy? Um, one of the things that I love, you know, especially in some of my work in communities, thinking about um, some of the crimes they've experienced is where are your vulnerabilities? You know, bullying is a big issue. Um, you know, thinking about, you know, gender-based violence. Um, we've talked about suicide at different parts of today. Um, we've talked about PTSD. We've talked about, you know, all of those gaps and those challenges that we have. So if those things exist in my community, how could I know more about it? How can I help people know that it's a safe place to talk, that they can share things? And I'm connected to my community partners. So if we need to make a referral, if we need to have conversations, we can do that. You know, you guys know some of the challenges that are spoken and unspoken. You know, when um, there's talking about like another symposium or things like that, what are topics you need to know more about? How can we help increase your knowledge? So lots of different things to think about. But the last thing I'll kind of lead with you, and I just gave you guys a lot of words this afternoon, I'm sorry, um, is that we have to just redefine success. After something hard has happened, we want a checklist. We want to do A and then B and then C and then be done, right? But that's not how it happens. And if we embrace 
the going forward and going back and going up and going down and sometimes going in 13 different directions at the same time and satisfying no one and and you know disappointing everyone it's okay because we have to redefine that for ourselves as well so if you can get to the check mark person call me immediately we can help redefine things to across communities um, but if you're having kind of the everywhere day, that's good. You're living, you're being present, and, and not every day will be like that. So again, I gave you guys a lot of words. Um, but no, even in hard communities, even when really hard things have happened, change can happen. I'm a survivor of crime, and I'm doing things that I never thought was possible. And I'm not just well I'm thriving. I'm really well. So we can heal. We can move on. We don't forget things, but we can integrate them in healthier ways. And communities can grow. And communities can challenge themselves, even get into angry, angry arguments with each other and be all kinds of difficult, but they can heal and they can become better. And new generations can do even better because of that. I've seen it happen in my career over the last 20 years. So kudos for all of you that have stood in for this day, that have, you know, listened to me say way too many words at the end of an afternoon, um, but just give yourselves just a ton of kudos for showing up, for continuing to lean in, um, and thank all of the hosts and presenters today that want to be here for you as well. So if you have some questions, you can drop it in the chat. Um, my email is going to, it can be circulated afterwards as well, but thank you again for all the work that you're doing. And hopefully you found a couple of things that you have some control over.